up, everybody, and welcome back to That Chick oh. Angel TV, and it's another episode of The Bald and the Beautiful. We are doing a Cheesecake Factory mukbang, so we're going to be stuffing our faces, but y'all know who I'm joined by, none other than Mr. Kev on stage. Hello, friends. Mrs. Kev on stage, also known as Melissa Fredericks. Hello. And my husband, who is already halfway through his meal. Who's I think happening? me and him and Melissa actually competing this time, actually. <laughs> um, say, Marcus I wasn't ain't the on the gram. I wasn't, yeah. I didn't Yo, start you're right. Melissa was, I was, was like, I'm not about to wait for you fools. I'm hungry. Um, so, you guys, today we would talk about, because this is something that all of us have either already gone through or will eventually go through. And that is quitting our jobs. And uh, by quitting our jobs, I mean the <clears throat> usual nine to five that was giving us security in quotation marks or um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to pursue what you see us pursuing here today, creating content, influencing the world, and building brands. So let's start off with... Um, uh, let's start off with uh, you, Kevin, I guess. Okay. What, uh, you've talked about yours actually a lot of your time at the bank in Boeing and whatnot. Was it hard for you to like to make that step or was it like, finally? Well, the hardest one was when Qu Key Bank quit me <laughs> and I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. They fired me, mm -hmm. even though I knew I was going to get fired. Why? I felt the most why I knew I was going to get fired. Mm-hmm. Well, because I said something dumb in the meeting with the area retail lead manager. Like what? She asked me what my dreams were. Mm hmm And I said, to be in entertainment, do plays and travel the world, entertain people. Oh, that's not dumb. You just were honest. No, no, there's another part. <laughs> <laughs> were you it. at the meeting? Mm -mm. I told her afterwards. She knew. She was like, you've been here fired. She was like, no, I mean your dreams at here at Key Bank. And I was like, oh, I'm just working here until I achieve those dreams. <laughs> yep. Well, why did they want you to lie? I don't know. I wanted him to lie. <laughs> I think they already knew that. Nobody just... want, yeah, nobody want to keep you around if they know. Right. Your end all goal is to get up out of there. And if you say Even it Even if loud. they know it. But if you say it, like, get out of here. But she knew I was performing well below my potential. Mm. Because at Bank of America, I really was South Sound seller of the of the quarter mm -hmm. in 2006. Like it was, that was amazing. Uh huh. When properly motivated, yeah. amazing. After the housing crisis, no bonuses were happening, and I hated my new manager. Not properly motivated anymore. I was like, this is now done. Mm. So that one was the toughest. But quitting Boeing probably had the most fear because that job was very easy. Mm -hmm. It was the most money I ever made. What prompted you quitting? To move here. Oh, what prompted me to quit and move here? Actually, well, a very yeah. specific interaction. I was on set being Zay Zay's dadager. Mm -hmm. On a break, the sound man was playing a game on his phone and it was like a they were turning the world around they're like 10 minutes guys 10 minutes mm -hmm. pulled up an apple box uh closed his boom pole down and just started texting his somebody and then he pulled out basically candy crush i think it was and was playing and in that moment i realized he's at work uh-huh like anybody else who has a 10 minute break basically does the same thing it's just that when he goes back to work he's operating sound on a movie set mm -hmm. and that to me was like i don't have to be the star i just want to be around wait a minute quick question mm -hmm. zay zay auditioned for actually the kids just watched it the other day mm -hmm. Little Little Day. it was so funny I, I said who is that they were trying their best to figure it out they were like who is it they could not figure it out i said he has a brother no naming everybody out <laughs> everybody like, but I said, they, you've been to his house. You know his parents. And so I was like, you all can get little Marcus to give you all some guesses. And he was like, who is this? They finally got to Isaiah. 
But what? How did that even come take place? Crazy Him auditioning enough, for that. He didn't audition. What happened? We were putting out videos. Oh, y'all putting out videos for the kids up in, in Washington. Washington. Uh huh. So my kids, uh, my son's manager, mm -hmm. uh, hit me up and was like, "Yo, they want Zay Zay for Buckwheat and Little Rascals remake." And at this time, I'm thinking it's like gonna be rolled out like the one we 95 saw. Ninety-five one. Yeah, like. Well, little did I know when we got there, we found out it was going to be straight to DVD. <laughs> Amen. Bless our heart. <laughs> and the dude, I was like, why though? And he was like, man, think about since he basically was like Toy Story. In 1996, Toy Story came out and that effectively killed the little kid movie. Because remember, we had like Sandlot, <laughs> Goonies, oh, yeah. Little Giants, Mighty, Mighty Ducks. Ducks. We had all them. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they were gone. And it basically ne never ending story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're right. I never realized that. Yeah, it happened right in 1996 when Toy Story came out. And they were just like, actually, man, we got a 2D animation, Lion King. We got this type with Toy Story. We're going to post. It's more foolproof than the kids' movies. Mm -hmm. So anyway, long story short, uh, he didn't audition. They just were like, what's his height, uh, his weight? Like, I literally had to stop what I was doing and drive him to his doctor to get him officially height, uh, uh, sized and weight. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize then, but now I know they were like making sure he was tall enough to the kid that was playing, uh, not Spanky, mm -mm. Uh, Porky? I think so. Porky. Because mm -hmm. Porky and Buckwheat have to be like a certain mm -hmm. look. Mm -hmm. So luckily Isaiah was tall enough or the kid was small enough. Uh, but anyway, uh, we ended up flying back and forth t to LA from work. And at first, I don't think it was... I never was going to be that parent that was forcing my kid to be in, uh, in the movies mm -hmm. so that I could be adjacent. Uh, I was also going to be supportive of them if that's what they wanted to do. And at that time, he really wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. But when I was down here and I realized in Washington, they don't be making movies and stuff. So you don't think about that much. Mm -hmm. But in L.A., you know, the like yellow signs that say this movie is mm -hmm. this way and they just be on poles and stuff. Mm hmm. Once I saw that based on a set we were going to, and then I realized how many times you actually see that in L.A. Yeah. And I was like, this whole time. I mean, I knew, but I didn't know. Because I've been, mm. been to L.A. before, but never on the... We just came for vacation, went to Roscoe's, Six Flags, you know, stuff like that. Right. So anyway, I don't want to take them the whole time. Uh, I remember the, that sound day, I texted Melissa. I was like, yo, I'm not going to be able to work at that job. Because you just took a leave of absence to do the thing. I took a leave of absence. And it was already kind of getting rocky because I was going back and forth before Little Rascals to do awesomeness stuff. Mm. And I was like working remote, getting a work computer. You know, Boeing had the work computers that were about as thick as this table. <laughs> uh, you had to plug your badge in for it to work because it was, you know, secure. You had to be secure and all this stuff. And basically, people at Boeing wasn't going for none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. It was like, bro, you basically, you should be happy to work here. Not on racist stuff. I don't mean that. Right. I mean, like, my... We're my, Boeing. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I always say, getting a job at Boeing was like getting a job at the chocolate factory. Like, this is Willy Wonka. You get in here, people retire. Mm -hmm. The average median age was like 67 there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my superiors were like, bro, if you don't want to work here, like, somebody else will. Right, happily. Right, so... I knew I was going to have to make a choice anyway. Mm -hmm. And his, the boy's awesomeness career was, was just getting started. It was dope. And that movie, and then that's when I was just like, I got to be in here. But that first Friday we got here, I remember our first full day here, we went to a Lakers game. Because this, I was telling you. That's Liz, when y'all seats were up on the back. That was when we were on top of the Staples Center. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's still the only Lakers game we've ever been to. Yep. We were inside of the roof. Oh, yeah. We were so high. <laughs> but I remember I wanted to see Kobe play before he retired. And I'm thankful we did. Good yeah, decision. Was, but then I was you, mad. Yeah. But we was like, are we really at the game, though? Because <laughs> we should have been there. <laughs> how high we are? $3 to rub together. We, and Melissa was low-key like, we Why just we quit our it? jobs. And you went and spent 200 and some odd dollars. You know, parking, food included. Uh -huh. So, like, wait a minute. You had to quit at that time, too? Yes. Oh, it wasn't a transfer. No. Mm -mm. Oh, that's the story that's never told. Mm -mm. Didn't know that. Mm -hmm. We oh, thought we right. could transfer because they have some boring offices down here in El Segundo. Yeah. Not far. But they used to see them out. That's why I thought y'all worked at. Boeing, first of all, we didn't realize how big LA was. Mm -mm. 
But yeah, do you want to tell your part? Ooh, tell your part. I didn't know you had to quit. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a forced quit. It was a forced quit. I was terrified. Um, so Isaiah had the movie. I remember the phone call. I was coming out here every weekend to visit Isaiah and Joe, or Isaiah and Kev, and mm-hmm. I would take Joe. Your plane got struck by lightning my, one time. I, my plane got struck by lightning one time. Oh, my I God. I was struggling because I was the only one still in Washington. And uh, we Boeing in Washington was about an hour mm-hmm. from where we live. And, you, you know, when you have kids, you have to drop them off at daycare, but they can only be there for a certain amount of hours. Right. And so I would have to leave early to pick him up on time to make that hour drive. Wow. Girl, by the end, I, I was like, I'm about to be on a performance improvement plan because I was like stressing myself out mm-hmm. trying to like manage both ends or whatever. So anyway, we have this conversation about moving and I realized I'm going to have to quit. I initially was going to try to transfer. Number one, El Segundo was far from where we wanted mm-hmm. to live. But more than that, because I know me, I probably still would have made the trip. Uh-huh. I worked for a... Um, I worked on the military side, on the P-8 program, is what it was called, uh-huh. uh, for the Navy program, and there were no transfers out here. Uh-huh. There's no, mm-hmm. I think El Segundo is commercial. I don't even know if it's... It is. Uh, it's, it's commercial. Yeah, commercial. So, And mm-hmm. I worked on the defense side. And the, although Boeing is, it's Boeing, it's really two separate companies under one roof. You have the commercial side, and then you have the BDS side. Mm-hmm. And so even that kind of transfer is not, it's not as easy as you think. Um, so yeah, child. To the point where they told us, like, it ain't just like I work in Target and I'm moving. Oh, get a job at this Target. Uh It was like, they told me, I don't know if they told Melissa this. They were like, you apply for that job, it's going to be like you applying for this job. Starting over. It's basically going to be as if you, Mm. because it's in a different, Boeing is, like Melissa was saying, BDS, and she was on plane, uh, uh, it's on programs. Right. Mm -hmm. So she worked on the P8 program, which is military plane. I worked on the 737 program. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, El Segundo, it could be a totally different thing. Right. In Everett, which is another plant in Washington, it's the big boys, yeah. 777, the Dreamliner, mm-hmm. 747. Yeah, yeah, all them humongous things. That's why that plant is as big as Disneyland. It really is. So, and LA also was a very small Boeing imprint. Mm-hmm. All the jobs in Boeing were going to South Carolina. They were. Oh, so if okay. we were moving to South Carolina, we could have got a job. You would have been fine. Because yeah. yeah. Boeing doesn't, uh, there was no unions or something like that yeah. in South Carolina. So they built a humongous plan. All the big wigs were moving there. Seattle had unions, but they couldn't close them. But anyway, California was basically like, look, bro, these people. And also people don't quit in Boeing. So it's if just they not can a lot retire and it's a good plan, yeah. Yeah. And it's an easy job for the most part. Well on machine. So I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, yeah, that's it. That's the you. story. I had How long did it take you to get... A job out here? About six or seven months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait, hold on. Listen. How quick did you get a job? About a year. I wasn't looking for a job. That's true, though. Wait a but second. But all death jobs came to me. Melissa was actively look. Boy, you talk about. So for six we months, the the neither earth. one of you all had a job? No, no I was working for, so I was doing the stuff for Optimus. Uh huh. I was working for Tracy Evans' company. Oh, right, okay. right, 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 right. Okay, so selling you merch and stuff. So we had that income. fizzled though. That fizzled pretty. There quickly. was no merch. Well, yeah, that's when I sold the A shirt. Yeah, there was no merch. <laughs> there was, there was no merch. Yeah. <laughs> um, the build up to us quitting though, because you gave it, you probably planned. It wasn't quite a year though. It was no. probably six months, and that might be worse. No, it wasn't that. move. No, because we was saved some yeah, money. Yeah, you're right, you're right. We had saved some money. I started telling you in November, and we moved in March. Child, so that's like holidays. Mm. <laughs> we had saved some money. I had paid some stuff off, so that because I was like, we're going to move. Any money that we have coming in, it needs to be money coming in and not like assigned yeah. to like a debt bill. And so we I paid some debt off, and we had saved a little bit of money. And we didn't even work at Boeing for maybe even two years, mm-hmm. max. Uh-huh. So it was like whatever little money was in like that little 401k plan. Burnt that. Yeah, it just was like, we're just going to kind of <laughs> live off that. Uh-huh. Um, and it worked. And got a bonus too. Oh, that Boeing was the other really thing. good Christmas Boni- bonuses. No, not Christmas. It was around Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, you're right. yeah. So no, we had so just told you around Christmas. Y'all said, let me just hold off, yeah. wait till that come through. Matter of fact, that's why we moved that's right That's why there. we, exactly. I don't know, let's move here. She was like, no, because if you don't get that, that little bonus. Yeah. You find out what the bonus is in Christmas right. if you get paid. Yes, from Valentine's it's Day. right so around Valentine's Day, and we left Mar- March first, like literally right after. You got your purse. All right. I look back at that picture we took. 
And I remember the moment, like, I post this picture every year, usually. Picture of us and Greg. We took it, our last picture before we got on the road. I literally took that picture, posted it, and then we literally got in the car and drove. Wow. And my kids had to pee in, like, 12 minutes. Mm-hmm. And it really kind of blew the whole, like, mm-hmm. The feeling of it. <laughs> we, we left the car. Ah! Yeah, you three exits now. All right. We got to. <laughs> Olympia. We got to. Th- I'm talking about two exits past our church. And the, uh... It was Joe. No, at the exit at y'all, y'all's house. No. He was like, I got to pee. I was like, I, I didn't want to stop until we got to Oregon. Right. He was like, I got to pee. I said, I told you to go. You know what? Let's just pee. But anyway. um, I can't believe there was it was six months. Six months. Wow. And the thing that's wild about it, Angel. Uh-huh. Our, our apartment rent here was more than double our mortgage. Oh, yeah. Smaller, you telling me? Mm-hmm. Bigger. Yeah. Our apartment's bigger than our house. It's about eighteen hundred square feet here. Remember, the house in Washington only twelve hundred square feet. <laughs> Was our place eighteen hundred? Oh wait, is the house eighteen hundred? No, no, our house is for sure twelve hundred. No, no, I mean the house, the receipt house. Oh, the receipt house. Yeah, yeah. It, don't it don't matter. I'm talking about Sadakoy apartment. I got you. Yeah. That was smaller. Mm-hmm. Zadakoy apartment in what city? In Reseda? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Y'all we lived it. around the corner from y'all the our whole time. time. So did 30 we. years. We lived <laughs> six <laughs> steps from each other. <laughs> Literally. Like for real. Like, uh, right by that 7-Eleven over there. Right and and that, that car wash is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That right apartment there. right there. Like literally. <laughs> wow. That's, that's where we were. It was, and, uh, listen, we hadn't lived in an apartment in. Since Isaiah was a baby six seven years so that was a huge adjustment but anyway um when we took that picture i remember being like all right now you done asked for this and melissa right. done went along right you better right. make it work because it wasn't no like i told you so like we really did work the plan together so i knew she wouldn't hit me with an i told you this wouldn't work but there was no like i mean i was like sure i would work it work but i didn't know how it was gonna work melissa why did you trust this Man, I don't know. Like, wouldn't you say it? Yeah. Yeah, he got it. He <laughs> Let's said, do he it. Got it. He got I really it. don't That's know. him. That's my. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, That's him. <laughs> yes. I'm going to stick beside I'm him. I'm going to stick beside him. I want to make that real with you. I've been saying I, I want to so do it with Marcus. Stupid things. <laughs> I'm going to stick beside him. Mm-hmm. Baby, that's what she said. Oh, you, yeah, you do enough stuff. I've done enough. Don't I don't even need to be in the video with you. No, not at all. But anyway, um, I really don't know. I really don't have an answer because when I think about it too hard, I'd be like, that's really not who I am as a person that would say, yeah, I agree to this. Mm-hmm. But I also think because we had just come off the heels only a few years earlier from your divorce. I mean, divorce from your. Um, oh, my God. Oh my God. I was this? like, wait a <laughs> second. Divorce from his job. The bald and the beautiful. <laughs> hey, wait. Yeah. We got all kind of things coming out of here. Y'all been home now. Like, Can't get married at twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all married at thirteen? So wait a second. <laughs> the heels of Kev's divorce yeah. during recess. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you're divor- he was divorced. He was fired from his job. Uh-huh. And I, always, I've told this story about how I was. Um, I remember very specifically going to our pastor's office, and we were having a conversation. And I low key felt like my pastor was trying to get me to say something different. And I remember seeing like the tears in his eyes. And I remember saying, I just want you to be happy. Cause he mm. was like, I don't want to go back to work. I just want to try this comedy thing. And everything in me was like, I don't, I want you to go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this I don't, don't, I don't, I don't know why you're doing this to me. I want you to go back. Remember when we had decided together that mm-hmm. the white picket fence was the dream. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you're kind of reneging on it. We that. already had basically got what we had signed up for yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah i just didn't realize it was gonna come in a different package you know um, what i mean you have yeah. a vision and yeah so anyway um i just remember that look and it was something that honestly it stood it stayed with me and one thing um i think that i always banked on although it took me longer to find a job than i i was like why is it taking me so long to find mm-hmm. a job um what you i bit my lip Ooh. For this, this he did that yesterday. That's the time, boy. I did it three times today. I'm, that's how hungry I am. Oh. <laughs> Let me get a little of this lip meat, too. <laughs> this lip meat, too. Are you mm. The way he's talking with his voice shaking. <laughs> oh, you got it good. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh it's, I got you know what it is? Probably swollen, so it's just in the mm-hmm. way now. It'll just be getting bit off. <laughs> I'm not going to look because I want to. <laughs> Go ahead. Angie can't look at blood. Oh, yeah. It was no, okay. I won't show you. 
Show me. Uh, he said, show me, though. <laughs> uh, I just remember him saying he wanted to be happy, and I've always banked on the fact that I knew I can find a job. Mm-hmm. Like, even if I we needed to go back to Washington, I knew I can get a job, even though we really didn't, I didn't know what, I was applying everywhere, I don't know why I couldn't get a job. But regardless, I was like, if nothing else, I know I am an employable mm-hmm. human being, yeah. and if all else fails, I will get a job it to make sure tips, that man. we can stay full. And that's actually I'm one of the things that uh, encouraged me is that one of the stats that we read was that it takes like um, for every ten thousand dollars you want to make, expect to spend a month looking for a job. Oh wow! And so we didn't know that. Going- <laughs> right, we're really helpful. We didn't to know, that. know that going in. We had read that like once we had moved here already. Um, but regardless, I was like, I know I can get a job. So I think I think it was a um, not to get super churchy, but I almost think it was like a supernatural faith God instilled in me that allowed that to happen. Mm-hmm. Because if I think too hard about it. It doesn't make sense that I would agree. Uh huh. You, know? you thought you'd be out of your job. No, <laughs> our, all of our plans were two, three months tops. Yeah. yeah. And our money was set up. We didn't have that fourth month. Our plans did not include. Mm. Yeah, but, but what it, happened is I made more other stuff happen here that wasn't. You all weren't expecting. Yeah, not, yeah. Like some Tracy Evans must like wait. This actually happened. Yeah. And even then, uh, uh, the fact that we didn't incur huge amounts of debt Mm-mm. during you that time. You weren't going for that. Huh? We weren't going for that. No, that wasn't. That we were never going to just go. We, going we, we sat at home. We Kevin were not going to go credit card. You debt. weren't going for that. No, I wasn't. <laughs> uh, we weren't going. We were going to go credit card debt to make it happen. Because no. yeah. that to us was like, well, I had already made that mistake. You said not do it again. Oh, with the laptop? Mm-mm. Sure. Playmakers credit card. Playmakers. Ran that up and 10 all bands. Those? Oh, the tour, the tour card. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Buying $500 plates. <laughs> that thing. Stuck beside him. <laughs> That's mine. Should have a picture of me buying a five hundred dollar plate, and the people be like, "You freaking idiot! Give me this money." I was so mad. That's <laughs> mine. <laughs> but I don't know where this is gonna go. But <laughs> honestly, I was talking to uh, Danny just today. Mm-hmm. Are you gonna talk about it? Yeah. Okay. I'm a, I'm a li- I'm gonna pass this on to you. She you know? said you're gonna talk about it. Because I just want to say, <laughs> part of the thing that was so difficult in leaving Duke's, um, fine, even though it wasn't up to me. Listen, they had shut the facility down. I could have showed up if I wanted to. I wasn't going to get a job because right. nobody was there. Um, but it was difficult me difficult in that um, I didn't look for another job. I didn't apply. I literally mm-hmm. was just like, I'm just not going to apply. I'm just not going to apply. And, uh, once this is over, I just won't have a job. Uh, but it was so difficult because... I think we talked in another month thing we were talking about when you choose a partner, you choose a role. And our dynamic mm. and role is that, okay, if he's if he's going to take the risk yes, and he's going to dream and he's going to, you know, potentially not have income coming in, mm-hmm. I will always be the safety net. Mm-hmm. I will always be, this will be our floor because mm-hmm. I know I have a paycheck coming in every two weeks. Mm-hmm. Listen, I don't know if we that have role, wrong, but me and you talked about that. Yeah. That was oh, maybe. Me and you had, yeah. Seasons one through 12 of our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that role, she won MVP every year. That's Melissa Frederick <laughs> saves the family. <laughs> here. He was the worst at acrobatics. Ah! <laughs> 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 I mean, just in the season. That season, I got fired. She had defensive player of the year, finals MVP. I'm talking about when I walked down to the unemployment office with both of them kids. I never. This is no lie. A bus passed us. I felt like I got off of it, even though I drove there. I was like, I am a single father driving a. I had a Civic at the time. Y'all, it's Civic still running. I promise. Oh, uh, yeah. so for sure. One point three million miles on it. Um, but yeah, she. I didn't mean to cut you off, but Melissa's role was the backbone. Uh-huh. This, it wasn't even a safety net because you you're not supposed to use it. Mm-hmm. Right. It, <laughs> that thing was the floor. Kill was her, laying, laying in the bed, like. <laughs> her thing was the floor. This is the ground. Melissa is the ground we walk on. Melissa was a trampoline. She had to spring your ass back up. <laughs> no, you was coming right back. <laughs> you do, and you get like a little bit of like, 
I don't want to say PTSD, but like PTSD, like I remember before it didn't work. Yeah. So yeah. like the idea of walking out, it it freaked me out for a long time. I bet there had been nothing in your defense. There had been nothing I had done to give you reason <laughs> to think it would work. That's what I when AJ asked you that question. So what? made you go along with this. It's like, what had he been doing in the past? I'm talking about, like, you know what, he got Play this. after play failed. <laughs> Money lost. Are y'all learning? Mm-hmm. We lost 40000 this time. The I second know. time, we only lost twenty. Yeah, but you don't know what? True story. Did you, uh, no. did you make twenty? No, no, we move. just lost them people's $20,000. <laughs> <laughs> the first time, we lost them people's 40000 <laughs> Did y'all ever make? We never made a profitable play. No. Ever. She said ever. <laughs> never nope. made a profitable play. We just All my Facebook memories money. just for Mother's Day. Me and Jay were just talking about this. Me and my little three followers on Facebook. Please go support my husband and his play at Show Wear. So it was Mother's Day. We was like, here, we'll get him on Mother's Day. <laughs> and people was doing everything else on Mother's Day. But coming to that play. I'm talking about, we're going to get the arena that's close to Seattle, Kent, Tacoma. The people was like, we're going, actually, we're going to drive to Canada today. And we're going to drive to Oregon. So y'all can go to the opposite way. Okay, cool. I said to my three followers, I, have, I said, I was doing this caption. Yo, out you, here doing a whole entire PR campaign. <laughs> to three people. You're talking about selling 700 uh, tickets in an arena that seats 6,500? <laughs> y'all ain't bombed like I bombed, baby. You ain't had to. And black folks will still sit spread apart. <laughs> There's 6,000 available seats in here. Yeah, and I thought I was selling the all. <laughs> Marcus, I thought I was selling all. Oh, we going to sell the six easy. <laughs> Why? Why would you think that? They were supposed to distance it before the pandemic. Yes. Yo. Y'all been keeping Woo! this in, so like, we Before we start the show, six. could y'all please group together? <laughs> <laughs> literally, I feel like we made that announcement. Not even, we yeah. literally did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come to the front. Everybody yeah. to the front. There's we a lot got, of people coming bro. in. Yeah, yeah, I feel like somebody's here. here. Melissa had front row to the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this woman love you, Cam. Bruh. Jesus. That's why I be telling people, like, you don't understand that, like, somebody believing in you when you've given them no reason... <laughs> Too, and we're still like that. That's him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a lover. Standing oh, in God. front of them six thousand, he's like, I done failed again, <laughs> majestically this time. <laughs> we were the first urban yeah. act in there. Yeah. They know why they didn't have them for three more years. Like we had the blacks in here ahead. Six they people. Sold, there. They sold two tickets. How did you while. keep signing up for this? I, like, we're gonna move on because I, I was never gonna stop here. doing this. I ever. mean, how did you not? I was pinky man. <laughs> you're you gonna do the you thing. The same thing we do every other day. I try to take over the world. Yeah. Are y'all having done it yet? The brain. We're gonna Kim and, oh, brain, Jay and Kev. So Pinky and the brain. So yeah, same how? Thing you do every day, Pinky. How? <laughs> Smart. You didn't. You didn't see the data. Mm -mm. That was the last. This time I got it. <laughs> every time. <laughs> well, you never I like. No, out. absolutely not. You have lost your mind. We are not. You are not doing this. No. The crazy thing about it, when we the wow. play I'm talking about, Melissa actually said that's the best y'all have done. It was. Would you let us hear some of the music? The music from it was good. I wrote so my song. Good. It, was, yeah. it was the best we ever done. It just. It was so good. It wasn't to be. Yeah. But um, we did get better. But yeah. the truth I learned is that market was never gonna no it was never you're never gonna be able to do that from there right 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 that i used to take it personally like man we just didn't have success but it's like me in salt lake city hello <laughs> at right. this age of my career i don't have sell out ability in salt lake city <laughs> it's but, just not with now you. atlanta might sell out six months ahead of time yeah. that i can do but tyler perry he started in atlanta the reason he was down there yeah, yeah. Seattle, there wasn't going to be enough black people to make it viable, even yeah. if it was you amazing. You could get all of them to get that. Yeah, this is yeah. social media. <laughs> yeah. So you really needed TV and radio mm -hmm. money. Regular people didn't. We didn't have that. Yeah. We had barbershop flyer and church announcement money. Yeah, it was like you were trying to build a sandcastle in the middle of the ocean. Bruh, yeah. with no <laughs> stars. <laughs> they was like, who's y'all A-list? We was like, okay, I went to Lakes High School. <laughs> people had known him there. <laughs> Jay knows all the barbers. <laughs> He's in with all the barbers. <laughs> Ant works on base. Yeah. So we got the military. That's all you need. We got the barbershop. Hey, Church. That's the trio right there. The whole community is either getting that's a haircut right, or that's that's the trio right there. Like, that's that's the whole yeah, community. hilarious. Talking yeah. about why you didn't sell so 7,000. Oh my god. We had 7,000 people in our church district. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I 
I'm really like thinking the to myself. The entire Puget Sound district came. There was not seven thousand people. How did I think I was going to do that? Because in my mind, it was done. When that people wasn't showing up, I was like, hmm. This is weird. This is not working. It's not, not nearly as many cars as they were in my dream. No, <laughs> so Jesus. Um, I don't ever recall. I didn't ever have to really quit a, um, a job because I never had a stable one. I just, <laughs> I just chose that that was not going to be like. Worked at some place. A summer, maybe. Really? really? Yeah, I've never worked at a place long term. Wow. Really? Ever. God bless. Ever. I knew that wasn't, even though I'm good at it, like I could be the best employee somebody would ever want. I knew that wasn't my calling. So mm. everything was just, this is in between the mm. thing that I'm going to leave you for. Mm. Really? Yeah. I worked, when I moved out to Los Angeles, I worked temp. And then I booked ER two months mm. in. You were in ER? Shut up, Kevin. <laughs> if I punch you in your bit lip. In your bit lip. My little go nothing different. It's already small. <laughs> like, literally, coming out of grad school, I was teaching musical theater at a Jewish summer camp. Once that was over with, I moved to Los Angeles to, uh, to the city we lived in. And I started temping. And then, so that was in June. And then I booked ER at the end of August, mm. September. Yeah, we found out driving back, driving out here when I was moving. Yeah, so like I was like, okay, so I know I can make money here. I was like, all right, mm. I didn't lose my mind. I haven't been betting on myself as an actress for no reason. Mm -hmm. So, and that was like, that was pretty lucrative, but I was still working random. I was still temp. Anytime I didn't have an episode, I would go back to temp work. Mm. So I was still doing like. In between ep episodes? Yeah, so like I wasn't in every episode. So say I was in an episode and I had an episode off. That week, I would tempt some. I would be an executive assistant. What an admin. Saying? Angel was. An I was delivering food. She was an executive uh, assistant for this rich lady. Rich. Uh, her rich. husband owns the Four Seasons in Beverly Hills. Just wow. running errands for this lady. Really? <laughs> yes. Angel While you were on the TV random. show. While I was on television, I was like, "Yep, I'm gonna be delivering pizza." What is? What would? Yes, is this your order? Uh huh. It was before, obviously, before Grubhub's and DoorDash <laughs> yeah. and Postmates. I was delivering Some of these jobs she just shouldn't have had. It didn't wow. matter. I was tutoring. Oh, that's probably the longest job. I was a math tutor for mm -hmm. about three years, all while I was on ER. You knew all that math? Yeah. <laughs> and then you was Nurse Don Autra. Now I was Nurse Don Autra for three years, working a regular, working regular what made random. You do that? I don't like brokenness. Mm -hmm. I like money. Mm -hmm. And. <laughs> but, however. Like the food delivery. That I made some money. Don't try to say I didn't make <laughs> no, no, no money. No, no, no. Angel was spending money to have, have this job. I was no, like, I wasn't. You are driving all the way down to wherever it was. Not not near where like we live. Like Wilshire and La Brea. <clears throat> Wilshire From La Brea. up here? Yes. She was driving down there Girl. to deliver, getting money for tips. They would give her a meal. A meal and a drink. A meal and a drink. She'd well, go deliver. She'd probably have like maybe two deliveries and then come no, back home. No, I'd have more than two. <laughs> Only worked on Sundays. Yeah, so it's not. Only worked on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, on Sundays. Um, I tried to be a uh, um, closed caption person. Mm -hmm. I just I couldn't. It was too hard to fit. I was doing a. You was doing any was old it? thing. What was the show? I was making grocery bags. I was doing. I was a closed caption for intervention. Yeah. The show where they I try to get what? drug addicts. Really? Yeah. What are you talking and about? Like, and I, when I say closed caption, I had the pedal. There's a pedal that you get. To fast forward, <laughs> rewind, pause, stop, mm -hmm. so that you're not having to move your hand off mm -hmm. the keyboard. They, they didn't give us that as interns at Oswald. You pause it. <laughs> ah, what did he say? Rewind. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I was doing That's that. It. Literally, she be. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I made jewelry. I was doing any and whatever and ever. Angel was literally making jewelry. Yeah. May had I, I had all the tools. Like I'm bending <laughs> copper, silver. Who are you? That's so funny. Bending copper. Oh yeah, I was making jewelry. But I tell stuff. you, we still got we just moved and I was putting that I opened up that crate and I was like Yeah. Her tools for making <laughs> jewelry. And all the pliers. Things don't even go together. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna deliver food, then I'm gonna do some close caption it, and then I got three bracelets to make, and then I got study these wires for tutor. next week. Yeah, the tutoring was probably the most, the easiest to do. That made the most money. It made the most sense. Um, <laughs> it made the only sense. Yes, it was hard because 
Because you just never knew. And then the writer's strike happened. Mm. Mm. And it was just like, oh, dear God, what is going to happen? Like, it, when is, how we, how am I going, am I going to get another paycheck from ER? And are we ever going to come back? So I just never wanted, I never wanted to waste my time that I had that was free and not use it to make money. Mm -hmm. And this was before Instagram. This is before I even started doing stand-up. I didn't start doing stand-up. Until I had little Marcus, and that's when I started working for my mother. Because that's when I was just like, before, I didn't have to worry about daycare. So I could literally take, I was the installing mainframe type computers at the Target <laughs> headquarters <laughs> at midnight as a job. I, I feel like you were on a quest to get the jobs that were least <laughs> like your other job. Installing mainframe, what are you even talking, what does that even mean? And they were these big bulky computers. You were at the where like this Target warehouse, and we had to install them. The sister went down. Who put the system in? Angel. <laughs> Angel. <laughs> on a Sunday night no. after six hours of tutoring and dropping off food and making sure <laughs> she went and installed the man. It was like who would take that job? We only had to be there for like two or three hours. You got paid five hundred dollars. It was just at a night. Day? It was, yeah, it was like because it had job. to be, uh, or. A day, so when you were there, mm -hmm. um, it had to be when they could take the systems down. Oh, so God. that's why I was so late at night. It was actually offered to Marcus. Marcus was like, I ain't doing that stupid mess. I said, oh. <laughs> I'll take it <laughs> because I, like, want me to what? Because <laughs> I used to give plasma, that used to be my hustle. Oh, there was a lot of times I thought in college yeah. I was gonna have because there was a plasma place. A Remember that plasma place yeah. across from my apartment? Angel. I had track marks. That's how bad <laughs> my mother was like, you have to stop. <laughs> when she saw she's the like, marks. Oh she's my. like, Mama, I got to make this money, though. <laughs> how much plasma, how much the plasma pay? I can't even remember, but it was a lot for a person that was in school. They don't pay here in Los Angeles. That's why I didn't do it here. Uh, they pay my place was like twenty five dollars a vision. I was like, I don't, I hate needles. I, I got to get it another way. Oh, uh, and I used to be. Able, I had it down to a science. Okay, so first of all, I knew how to get that blood up out of me quick. Mm -hmm. It's all about when the machine is doing its rotation, pump, 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 pump. When it stops, you stop pumping your hand, and the blood will rush out faster. <laughs> like, how many times did you yeah. have to go? Several. That's what I'm to saying. Figure that out. Twice a week. <laughs> she traded her body to give up blood faster. Oh, and I had good blood. I am uh, O positive. I got that oh, good you plasma. You are. You're rare. Yes, I was like, oh, absolutely. In the so it I'm would be covered. <laughs> It'd be early in the morning. Because you can donate to air all the blood types, right? All, all of them. them. Yeah. Blood type? I don't all know. of them. I, it would be, you can I, order it on uh, Amazon. I ordered a kit to figure out my blood type. Really? really did. I'm hmm. A positive. Bless his heart. Can't do nothing. But I'm common. <laughs> you are common. I'm very common. They so tell you when you're pregnant, you, and I don't remember. Well, most other people. <laughs> I, uh, listen, I would be there when they would open. It would be me and a bunch of drug addicts <laughs> and homeless people oh, ready. Oh they, well, because good. they needed the money. Blood and they were like, That's true. Blood is blood. blood. I feel like blood the blood is, is blood. on the rock. Listen. Uh, so I finally stopped looking for random jobs. I think once I had, once, right before I had the twins. That's when I stopped. I was just <clears> like, <throat> that's when YouTube became something viable. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I can make money still entertaining people. And I can do it from home. I was like, this, <clears throat> and my children can be involved. So it's not a thing of where I have to push my children off to the side mm -hmm. and do this thing. But <clears throat> it, yeah, it took, it took several years before I got to the point where I felt comfortable enough knowing that the Lord was always going to make provision. Mm -hmm. That there yeah. was never going to be a time where something he blessed me with that I was not going to be able to afford to keep it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but no, I never had, I never, there was never a job that I had that I needed to hold on to because of, because of my connection to the job or because I was afraid of failing, but I've had several random little jobs because of me being like, I don't, I want money. I don't want not to have money. I want, mm -hmm. even though it's not like we did good by our money. It wasn't no. like after doing all those jobs, I was able to look at our savings account and be like, thank God I we did all of that. spending money. As quick as it came in. Oh, yeah. So y'all was just spending it because you made it? Yeah, we just didn't have a plan. Yeah, We, we didn't, didn't know that's plan. what people did. I knew I was stable. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about nothing. No, well, tell them about you good coming out here. So Marcus had to quit to move out here because yeah. it was obvious. There was no 
uh, transfer. Sense. There was no nothing. No, nah, nothing. I was uh, started calling places, uh, just letting, hey, I'm moving out there, but everybody said the same thing. Well, let us know when you get here. Mm-hmm. Like, let me interview now so I know I got something. Yeah. But it took, I don't know, was it four or five months? Yeah. Mm-hmm. About four or five months for me to finally find something. Um, and then it was uh, it was even switching up my what I did a little bit because I was an electrician by trade. And then switching it up to like building engineering because it's like the industry for ele- electrical work was different out here. It's like mm-hmm. a completely different atmosphere. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so and just uh, getting promoted through that, getting new jobs because you know don't tell, don't forget the job at the that where you were selling stuff. What was I selling? It was packages of some sort. Was it spa packages? Spa packages. <laughs> Before I found the same word. <laughs> there was a, you was cold calling? No, we were actually walking out in Beverly Hills, walking into businesses and shops and trying to sell these. <laughs> I did it for a whole day. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> they gave us, <laughs> they, we took the little training. That was one day. And they say, yeah, you'll be doing, you know, this is, you know, how you present the package and all this is what you say, the do's and don'ts. Like, well, how much are we going to make on this? They told us, I don't remember what it was, but like the package costs this much. You get a percentage of everyone you said. Well, it's like, all right, cool. I was like, it is what it is. <laughs> so we met out with the, it was the weirdest people. Everybody out here is weird. It was the, I don't remember, but the chick that took us, she was taking us to the spot. She wanted to drive my car and I seen her driving. I said, don't nobody drive my car. <laughs> you almost wrecked your car. I can only imagine what you're going to do to mine. So we finally found somewhere to park. I still don't know where we were. I know we were over in Beverly, over in the hills somewhere. Beverly and Center. We, yeah, it was Beverly Center. Mm-hmm. Like that whole area. We were just yeah. out walking around. <laughs> with my little man. It was like a step above People, Cutco. I was like, this is back to what it sounded like yes. to me too. People was turning us, especially me, turning me away so quick. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Get out of my shop. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you got one, man was, one man took the time to listen to me. He was just being a jerk. He said, so why exactly would I go through mm. you all to do this when I can just go get the spa myself? I said, because you don't get the same deal as I do. He was <laughs> like, but you're not really offering me. <laughs> I was like, look, man, I don't know the ins and outs. Do you want it or not? <laughs> What's the deal you're giving me? It ain't a deal per se. Yeah. Just hurry up, man. I'm, I'm from Kentucky. But I, I, ended up, I ended up selling two. Did you? In yeah. a day? In a day. I ended up selling two. Mm-hmm. And they were like, we've never had anybody sell more than five in a day. And this is so-and-so. And she's up there all proud. She said, she sold five in a day. And that's the record. Well, I sold two. And I'm like, y'all owe me. I think they owe me like $50 or something. <laughs> I hounded them. No, they paid me. Oh. I hounded them people for six months. <laughs> Went back up to the office. The office was went back up to the office. The office was closed. It's about the principal at this point. Oh, yeah, the they spent more than oh, that yeah. They owed me. I didn't care. You owe me my money. Though. I said I'm gonna go back. I know exactly where they at. I went up there. That smoky. office was vacant. <laughs> office was vacant. Like nobody was ever there. I said I don't know how to find. <laughs> Find these people. Like them stock movies when they get <laughs> caught by the FCC, they're coming. The desk <laughs> is gone. <laughs> three pieces of paper the, the door was like, I looked in there, I said, oh, there's a desk right there. <laughs> <laughs> it was gone. There was a desk right here. Yeah. Uh. But, uh, so I ended up going to this, um, I was just going to take my resume, dropping them off at places. And I walked up on this one place and I was like, hey, here's my resume. They was like, we don't really, um, have higher outside. We actually have uh, engineering or whatever. And uh, here's the chief. You know, here's his number. You can give him a call. I'm like, all right. So I call him. He was mad. He said, "How did you get my number?" Well, he gave me his business card. It was like, <laughs> "How'd you get my number?" So I told him. He was like, "Well, you need to apply here." So I went and applied. Ended up getting hired. Uh, I was out in Woodland Hills. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that started my restabilization of being in California, doing mm-hmm. that, and then. Working my way up, plateauing there, going on to another company, working my way up, plateauing. Now, Marcus has had to quit quite a few jobs. Every time. Yeah, I work up, I get to a level, and I'm just like, they ain't giving me what I know I deserve. Or these fools is acting <clears throat> stupid. I need to move on. So I start moving on, start praying about it. God, this is what I want. God's like, here, he gives it to me. Every time. <laughs> wow. And move up, same thing happen. So then uh, the where I'm at now... Uh, kind of the same thing started happening. I, I switched uh, departments. 
So I started off in one department. They kind of headhunted me. I was looking for a job, um, needed to get away from where I was. I was probably looking for like a week and a half, and this headhunter called me. I was like, and they told me the, you know, the position where, well, I'm like, still didn't tell me a whole lot about it. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not interested. So they called me for like another week and a half, something like that. And I can't find to sleep. It's all good. No, I <laughs> no, I just like, no. Nah, um, so I ended up interviewing. I was like, oh, okay, it sounds cool. So anyway, I started working for this company, and then this is your that, current company. Yeah, the okay. current company. But within that department, I was just like, there's no uh, career path that I'm interested in, and I see exactly what I want to do. And actually, there were people in the other on the other side that was just like, we need you over on our side. We need mm-hmm. your expertise. I'm like, cool. So I let let the higher ups know like, hey, this is what I want to do. They was like, oh, we can't really take you because it's like us headhunting from our own mm-hmm. company. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm gonna leave this regardless. Right. So <laughs> it's right. Not really. We can't take you from them. I'm leaving them. So if I need to reapply, I'll do that. So they, they were willing to take me, but it got real political, real nasty. Uh, had a couple of unfortunate conversations with some higher ups because <laughs> I wanted to leave. Whatever. But anyway, lo and behold. I switched over to the other side. They didn't start me off where they said they would, but they mm-hmm. was like, well, this is the career path. I'm like, cool. So lo and behold, I'm in this position. I, I'm in the, headed toward the position that I've been praying for. I'm like, this is what I want. Or, you know, been doing my praying and everything. Meanwhile, I'm like, or you could come and you could do stuff with me. How long? What's the gap? I mean, what's the time frame on this job? I've been there almost five years. So this is when, during this sex? Hmm? In this current position, five years? In the new department, five yeah, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. The new department, two years. Yeah, not as long. Yeah, okay. But yeah. he started. I told him with the company, almost five, five years. years. Got oh. it. Uh-huh. And so with these two years, that's when Angel's like, "Come work with me." I, I've been saying that starting when she he started this job. I'm like, "Come yeah. work with me." Got it. Come please to do yeah. stuff with me, please. And I'm like, I don't see it being. He was like, I need to see the money first. I don't yeah, really I see like, the money. Just, just <laughs> sitting there recording now. But anyway, um, <laughs> so I, the, the, it's, there's a guy that I saw, and he's in the position that I've been shooting for, right? Mm-hmm. And I crossed paths with him one day. I'm on my way home, and I had to stop somewhere and pick something up, and I see him. So me and him, we just start talking. I'm like, hey, man, how's it going? So he's going through everything that's going on at work, and just give me like a rundown of everything that's been going on. And after that conversation, I was like, I don't want to do this. Mm. <laughs> he's like, if that's I what have, I'm working towards, I'm working toward. I don't want to do this. And that drive home was probably the most terrifying mm-hmm. drive home because I'm like, what am I supposed to be doing? Yeah. This is what I've asked for. This is the guy was like, all right, here you go. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. So I got home and I told the agent, I was like, I don't know what I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, right. absolutely do not want to do this. Um, How long was, ago was that conversation? That was probably two years ago. Yeah. Year yeah. and a half ago, something year like that. Year and a half, something About like year that. Year and a half ago. Yeah, then finally he had the epiphany. He had the epiphany of like, okay, I see. Well, Angel finally sat down with me and like went over the numbers and everything that we doing. And she was just like, this is what you can bring to the table. This is what you brought to the table. This is what we've been doing. And I was like, huh. No, he called me one day. He said, I have epiphany. I know what I want to do. I was like, what? He's like, I want to do the influencer thing. I want to make content. I want to, and I was like, like, like he just had this discovery. Nigga, I've been asking you to do this with me. I don't know how long. It was a frame of word in that moment. So <laughs> yeah. Something that you asked him, he didn't remember that you asked him. And he, he came to it as she didn't say it me. like that though. <laughs> she didn't say it like that. Just like she be saying me. No, you didn't say it like that. <laughs> And so we had just been saying that we wanted to at least replace what he was doing. Yeah, because I was like, I need to replace my income in order for me to step away. Like I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm the safety net or the ground. I don't know, but I can't just be like, all right, let me go out there and see if I can make this happen. It ain't right. no see if I can yeah. make this happen. It's like it needs to either happen. Plus, y'all got I've never family. stepped away from anything okay. without being able to step on something else. Right. Listen, I understand. Um, I have, but and then, <laughs> so then uh, Angel. Decided she was going to do this tour or said she really wanted to do the tour. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So then we started talking about the how that would look. It's like, all right, Angel's gone on tour. I'm at work and we're sitting there going over like our channel and our business and everything that's going on. And she was just like, uh, so how are we going to make this work? And I was like, am I going to have to quit my job? <laughs> no, I, no, I said the only way I'm doing the tour is if you come off your job. I was like, that's, I'm not going to sit here and try to piecemeal childcare. I was like, I'll be stressed out. I won't be able to focus. 
I'll end up hating being on tour mm-hmm. because I'll be like, okay, did somebody come? Mm-hmm. Marcus has to leave for work, but somebody and Marcus mm-hmm. leaves for work at like five thirty in the morning. Yeah. Like, who come in to watch the kids at five thirty and right. wait till he get I'll back be at six? Well before that. that, that's you gonna be in the same position I was. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, who gonna do it? My house at five. <laughs> he out of the house at five. Regardless, nobody's gonna do that, and I was like. Or what you could do. So that's why I had to call Kevin. I was like, okay, explain the tour. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? How we? How does this work? I was like, and so once we got an understanding, I was like, yeah, you might as well come on. So the 27th of May is my last day Woo! at work. Woo! That means you must have just gave them your two weeks notice. Two he weeks gave, ago. He gave oh, you gave him a month notice. Yeah, Marcus wanted to be hella professional about it. I was like, look at you being sweet. Yeah. You ready? You know what's crazy? I was telling, actually, I was telling Kev, he probably don't remember. I remember uh, everything. <laughs> now, I was saying, I, the most nerve-wracking part about it is I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what I'm going to do. I do remember this. I, <laughs> I really do. No, for real, it's like, 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 what is the, what does the day look like? Yeah, what does the day look saying? like? All right, I wake up, I'm going to do what? Like, I need <laughs> that, this, then this, then this, then this, and make sure that's done, finish this, this is the priority, this is the secondary I have no idea. Mm-hmm. And it's and not even the you 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 and Melissa are very similar. Greg in same boat. Greg was like, man, my dad worked every day for his whole life and retired. I, I been, just thought that's what I was gonna do. I never even considered mm-hmm. that there was another way to do things. I've been stable in this for probably close to twenty years. Yeah. So to be like, ah, I got bigger and better things to do, which I do, but I, I have no idea. And there's nobody to tell you. Like. Nope. Nah. nope. Got to figure this out. There ain't but, nobody um, saying today this got to be done or nope, the end of this uh, week. But what's um, kind of scary, but the way faith works, it can be scary sometimes, mm-hmm. is everything I've asked for, God has made sure I've gotten it and been stable in it. Yeah. And so it's like, now that I'm here, I can't be afraid to mm-hmm. take that step because he's giving He was like, all right, here you go. This is what yeah. you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. This is what you you know, kind of asked for, not kind of, this is what you asked for. This is what, this was, you wrote this down as your vision in oh, uh, say, I remember 2020. Mm-hmm. He surely did. I remember us having a conversation. You talking about you was going to want to leave your job. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, you guys, this is what's happening on The Bald and the Beautiful. The Bald and the Beautiful is about to be four full-time content creators slash comedians slash producers slash whatever the hell else we are. And Marcus, um, no. No, Marcus had to do the same <laughs> thing. My husband was nice enough to allow me to pursue something uh, and support support me in the same way that most people find acceptable for wives to support their husbands. Mm-hmm. That's like, the other thing. So, I mean, this is hard to say no against a dream that your spouse has. Mm-hmm. And that's why I see how Melissa was just like, all right, let's do this. Because Angel's be like, I want to do this tour. You're going to have to quit, quit your job. So if you like, say no, she can't do the tour. Right. She's going to be looking at you on that Thursday. That show is happening. She's going to be like, hmm. Well, the same. But we also had the discussion of, I was like, as much as your job gives you so much stress and anxiety, I was like, and you're now being given the opportunity to leave that mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. I said, it's the same way that you get when one of your female friends is like, this dude has been talking mm-hmm. to me cash crazy. Mm-hmm. You like... I'm going to handle them. You ain't got to worry about seeing them again. And then you see them together. And you like, you idiot. And I said, like, hey, what are you doing? Right. Same it's like, Marcus, why you keep going back and letting that, that job treat you that way? Yeah. Um, so I just. Well, listen, there's a comfortability in that. Like, that's what you're taught as kids. Yeah. You go but, to school, get an yeah. education, yeah. go to college so you can get a good job. But here's right? the thing that came back and and. and Bit me is just like I always tell people comfort is the enemy of success. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As long as you're comfortable, you will never sit, you will never exceed. Mm-hmm. It's like you ain't until you get uncomfortable out of your zone and start growing. Growing hurts, it's called growing pain. Growing yeah. hurts. That's good. Listen, I was trying to grow as a comedian this pandemic, and that required me to bomb. When did you bomb? That Thanksgiving show, I think about putting that oh, out. Oh, yeah, you said that you didn't put why, it out. Why are you a glutton for punishment in this you, way? But to be fair, though, it could be. No. You can put that out for the sake of, like, <laughs> yo, we <laughs> all still bomb. No. They, they, they should know this. Yeah, the I, comedians I think, should know and, this already. And I think that they, <laughs> oh, they do know it. Like, <laughs> absolutely, comedians <laughs> do. And not just that, 
I think um, all of us, I think people in general, you put yourself out there in terms of vulnerability, transparently, look at me, I wanna show you some of my failures. But it also ends up being bullets for people. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. And that's and, something that's very and and standard. walking if the it's line, like singing, because I had made a video of me trying to sing like Jimmy Fox, mm-hmm. and I was like, I'm sure I sound good. Yeah. And I listened, I was like, Well, I don't. Putting that is different because I'm not a singer. Correct. Mm-hmm. But I am a comedian. Correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, she right. People be there if they can find some way to use something yeah, as a you weapon. Like, I gave that to you. How you gonna turn around and give me? Wait, hold on. What you mean? Mm-hmm. Well, you guys. Hopefully, you'll get some more of the bald and the beautiful stuff. And increase y'all Patreons, man. People ain't got no jobs. <laughs> <laughs> we do got here. jobs. We got whole new careers. Y'all is our job. Entertaining you, the people. Mm-hmm. And you're going to get some more entertainment. And so, we're excited uh, about subscribe it. Subscribe to Angel's pot, p- Patreon. Angel the Market Patreon, man. That chick. Uh, Amari ain't eating all day. Because y'all didn't cry. <laughs> 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 the boy's I'm, hungry right now. It's your part. No, no, no. Piece of cardboard <laughs> that he found. And no, the angel wings have been a blessing. And so, we do appreciate them. But if you do want exclusive content, early content, you can come over there. Because we be having a good time. All right, you guys, y'all know what to do. Check out the latest episode of The Bald and the Beautiful Married at First Sight review on Mrs. Kev on stage. Uh, Make sure you get your tickets to the Slightly Problematic Take Two tour, which I will be starting my leg of the tour um, in the Lexington date, but Kev starts here soon. Starting in Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City. It's almost sold out, so don't wait. Ah! Don't don't, don't wait. Get those tickets. Ah! Get those tickets uh, soon, and Marcus will be appearing in an office in our home soon. <laughs> amen, amen. Yeah. amen. <laughs> gotta get that together. All right, y'all. Y'all be blessed. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. That chick angel. Hey. That chick angel. Hey. That chick angel. Hey. That chick angel. Hey. A boss, a wife, a boy, my me. Yo, she's comedy. Come get your life. Uh.